Hi, Peace Nick. Uh, and hello, the crystal. <clears throat> Just let me know if you can hear me. Just text in. Great, you found me. Thank you. I'm so glad you did. Okay, I will let you in in a moment, the crystal. I'm just going to kind of let everybody, let people start joining, and then I'll let you in. Okay, great. Peace, Nick. Thank you. So happy you're here, by the way. So we can just take a minute to relax. <clears throat> and then I'm going to uh, let my guest in and we're going to have our conversation. But it's definitely appropriate, given our topic, to take just a moment to settle Hi, Ruti and Diane. And Lo. Yes, I know, Diane. I'm going to let her in in a moment. <clears throat> I want to introduce her first, and then I'm going to let her in. And maybe I'll start that now. Hi, Bonnie. So, uh, today we're going to speak about the creative process, which to me, the, the creative process and the process of, of spiritual awakening are intimately linked. Hi there. <clears throat> and I thought to do this because uh, there was a, a friend of mine, someone I met streaming, actually. Uh, I met her on uh, Kick, which is a different app where I sometimes stream, and she streams there as well. And we had a conversation about art. She's an artist, she's a painter, as you will see in a moment. And we had so many uh, synchronous, so, so many uh, similarities in the way that we were thinking. Hi there, Art by Tigress. Uh, that I thought it would be really fun to get on live together here and just discuss the artistic process and, and where the source of art actually is. So. Uh, I'm going to let her on in a moment. Her name is The Crystal. Uh, she's a, mainly a portrait painter. Hello. And uh, when she did, when I saw her during live streams on Kick, she was uh, basically painting and then talking with people as they visited. And I could just watch her technique, and her paintings are, are very beautiful, very well done. Uh, and then I found out, <clears throat> oh, I'm glad... Hey, Ali, nice to see you. Uh, so happy you're here. And so I thought it would be great to get her on and talk to her. So her name is The Crystal. Uh, we'll find out more about her when we get her on. She's uh, a very passionate and uh, wonderful woman, passionate about her art, passionate about the creative process, uh, and just a beautiful human being. So that's awesome. Art by Tigress. I'll have to check out your Instagram more closely later. And so uh, I am going to let the crystal in. There you go. I am excited. <clears throat> and let's see what happens. There you are. Hey, Jeff. Hey there. How are you? I am good. How are you? Oh, very good. Um, I'm excited to talk to you today. Uh, hi, Ali. Ali is another friend of mine from Kick, although she hasn't been on for quite a while. But um, I've been I've met some very wonderful people there, so I'm 
feeling uh, blessed and grateful. Uh, yeah. So, as I said, the crystal. Can I just call you Crystal? Please do. <laughs> That's my name. Okay. And and your um, your website is thecrystal.com? Yes, but there's no A instead of an A, A, it's a V. Right. So a V instead of an A. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. So I saw you painting on kick, and I see you've got one of your paintings behind you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just very taken by your, uh, by the presence of attention that you are bringing to the art. Hi, Laura Lee. Laura Lee Kelly just joined. She's a friend of mine who's also an artist um, and will be my guest someday here. Uh, and then we spoke about art. So maybe you could just take a minute and let people know about your passion for art and how you got started and why and why mm -hmm. you paint. So basically all my life, I've really been into like different forms of art, like photography, videography, drawing, doodling, <laughs> all, all that sort of thing. Um, and maybe four or five years ago, I was just practicing with art, uh, with paint specifically, um, going through like YouTube tutorials, and then I stopped. <laughs> I didn't touch paint for years, but almost three months ago now, I think it's been three months, <laughs> um, I had this urge to just paint, like I was stressed out and I needed something to just let it out. Like some people turn to drinking, some people turn to uh, drugs, but I was like, I just had this urge to just paint. Mm. So <laughs> I think my friend Will is on here. He was like, go ahead, do it. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I'm going to Michael's right now. I went to Michael's that same day that he was like, do it. I spent a lot of money uh, <laughs> on my first purchase at Michael's. I bought my easel. I bought canvases. I bought professional. I really went all out. And after that, I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do off of all this stuff that I got, but I'm going to do it. So I painted my first painting, which was was a um it was actually an image of my two daughters um staring and looking at um the sunrise and the way the colors hit the clouds i just always loved that image um and ever since then i just it's been non-stop mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> i haven't stopped and 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 you i i i believe i'm imagining you you are not a full-time painter this is not how you support yourself no, I'm actually my nine to five. Well, I call it my nine to five because I don't literally work nine to five is in um, instructional design. So it kind of is like an art mm -hmm. <laughs> with instructional design. So I wasn't completely deprived from art. I see. I see. Um, and I guess some of the things that I wanted to, to talk about uh, with you is uh Something that uh, I read about and could relate to it, it, is there's a book called What is Art by uh, mm -hmm. the Russian author Leo Tolstoy. Uh, and of course, his medium was literature because he was a writer, but you know, he was talking about art in general. But he talks very much about how the there's an the artist, when they create, whether it's writing or painting, they're, they have, they're having an inner state of consciousness. You know, they're feeling a certain way. And what they're transmitting is that inner state. Uh, you know, and so when someone then sees the art or reads the novel later, uh, the beautiful thing that's being uh, transmitted is the inner state of the artist. And, and the idea is that it's very, you know, I, I often say to people, have you ever, oh, hey, uh, hey, Gypsy, nice to see you. Um, have you ever tried to express how you feel to somebody and been frustrated that no matter what you describe mm -hmm. and no matter what they seem to get, you feel like they're not quite getting what you mean? <laughs> And it yeah. can often feel like our inner experience is so private uh, 
because we don't know how to share it. And so what Tolstoy was saying is that art is the best medium we have for sharing the inner experience. Uh, so Beautiful. I'll just leave it at that and see what see see how that strikes you. Yeah, um, the thing I've, I love about showing my art is that when I'm painting, first I want to say the end product of my painting is always a shocker to me. Like when you see it and you're like, oh, oh, that looks so nice. I'm like, oh, that looks so nice. I had no idea <laughs> it was going to turn out that way. But with each piece, even the commission pieces, I really try to like look into that person and see what do they give off and what can I add to their painting to really make it more um, personal. I'll smile. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I like putting certain touches on it to give a certain feeling from it. Like um, I did a painting of a rapper ESTG and I made it very rough, like, I wrote the lyrics down. The lyrics are were very <laughs> vicious. <laughs> so I wanted the, the painting to look the way um, the, everything was described in the lyrics. Um, but it's really fun and therapeutic almost. Yeah, it can, it can certainly be. Have, have you heard of the term uh, method actors? Method? Uh, are, are those the actors that really get into the exactly like offset? Oh, that's cool. It's so, scary, so, but right. But certain method actors, you know, uh, they will they just get so deep into the character that they can't get out, you know. And and so sometimes when they're working, they have they organize their whole life so that they never have to leave the character because they want to they really want to be inside that character. Hi, Supriya, Cowboy, and everyone else who's been joining. Uh, and I think in some ways artists do that. That's what I was just hearing in what you said. You know, you're you're doing a painting of someone and you're trying to get inside them and, yes. and, and be in that character so that you can transmit it, you know, because mm -hmm. it's very hard. You can do it, right? You can, <clears throat> I knew someone who, who, they made a living making copies of uh, classic paintings like the Mona Lisa. Okay. And, and he, they had a technique, which was basically they would, they would grid out uh, on a photo of the painting and on a canvas. So right. that they were little one inch squares and they would just make each one inch square a perfect replica of the one on the, on the painting. And okay. they could make copies of the original that, you know, you'd almost need to be a professional to, to know that it wasn't the original. Because you know, oh, wow. they would copy it right down to the brush strokes, right? Uh, but to me, at least, it's it's not art in the same way. You know, it's it's really a reproduction mm -hmm. of 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 the art. It's, I mean, of course, it's its own kind of art because you have to be very skilled and talented yeah. to be able to do it. But you couldn't. There's a reason why the Mona Lisa is worth what the Mona Lisa is worth and a reproduction isn't worth the same amount. Right. Uh, it's because there's something that's being transmitted through the original that's okay. harder to, that you can't just duplicate. I never viewed it that way. Okay. That's, a, that's very insightful. I never viewed it that way. Yeah, I mean, it's just, these are the kind of interesting things. I want to tell you a story about, uh, I had I had a very powerful, yes, yeah, so authenticity. Do you know A Fly Mind? Yes, that's I, my good friend, Will. Okay, oh, that's like Will, okay. My Hello, top Will. motivator ever. <laughs> oh, fantastic. It's always good to have motivators in your life. Yeah. Uh, people who believe in you. So I was in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, absolutely, Will. And uh, it, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, if you've never been there, it, it has a lot of Impressionist paintings. So it mm -hmm. um, uh, has a lot of paintings by Monet, like Water Lilies, there's all these famous paintings that, that the French Impressionist Monet did. Uh, and there's one called Cathedral at Sunset, and it's hanging there. and. 
I'm, I, it was just one of these moments where I went and looked at it and I thought, you know, it's kind of big, bright yellows, uh, okay. kind of blurry looking, the painting. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, hmm, this is what I was thinking. It's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, I can't, I can only hardly tell what it is. You know, it's kind of like fuzzy. Was it that, because the impressionist, paintings you can still make out what's there because exactly they, yeah right so right. you couldn't make out what was there i could but i i don't know i was kind of like not that impressed and then i was looking okay. and i thought i must be missing something you know so i was just looking at it looking at it and then i noticed that it was so yellow it was all yellows and whites it was so bright i almost felt like i needed to squint my eyes to see it mm -hmm. and then while i was squinting my eyes i it, it went and i thought oh this is what the cathedral looked like at sunset. The, the sun oh, no. was bouncing off of it into his eyes and he painted exactly what he saw, including how difficult it was to okay. see. And, and I thought he really was, he was not trying to reproduce the cathedral. He was reproducing the moment he saw it, right? His, he was reproducing okay. his, his actual experience. And I thought, how amazing. Uh, then now it's like one of my favorite paintings. If I was a, if I was a, if I was a multi-billionaire, I'd buy it. Um, yeah, good thing you stayed there instead of walking right past it. Like, oh, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really, really it really changed my whole view of art. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm hearing that, like when you say that you, you were looking at the lyrics. See, I was loving that because you were like getting into the lyrics of the person you were painting so that because yeah. that t gave you a different window into their being yeah, and then that could be somewhere captured do you have that <laughs> painting with you um no someone actually stole it <laughs> someone um, stole a so painting? i went to an event to give it to him and there was something that happened outside of the place that i get they gifted it to him at and they needed to rush him out. So he sent me a message on Instagram. I was completely shocked that he messaged me because <laughs> he has like almost a million followers. And he was like, I accidentally left it. Can you go grab it for me? It's gone. So I'm going to repaint it, but it's not the same. It's not the same when you repaint it. So I told them that I would do other paintings for him, but um, him and his team have all my contact information. So. Well, maybe you could uh, repaint a painting of him for like a different photo or something. Hmm, I could probably do that. Because it's hard to recreate the exact yeah. same one and have it be fresh again. It is. And it's just, it doesn't feel the same. <laughs> like when you said, repainting a painting that was already there. It's just, it's... Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it, it would be very, very, very hard. Um, yeah. So, so what is your state of consciousness when you paint? She's a big deal. That's you. Ah, right? thanks, Will. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I feel lucky to know her, Will. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now you've met him, so you have that to add to the painting. Yeah, that was a complete... I didn't expect him to be such a kind person because he looks so, like, stereotypical, big diamond necklaces. <laughs> he was cool. I was like, oh, that experience was... I can't even describe it really. Well, but then, um, you have a whole other dimension to add to the painting then that you didn't know about. Yes, yes. And for the recreation, I'm gonna try to make it pop a little bit more so it's a little different. Mm. But um, when I'm painting, uh, as you know, that I, I go live each and every single time that I paint throughout the entire process. Um, but I'm just really in the zone. I'm thinking about the different values, the different colors what type of brush I'm using. Like, I'm so absorbed in the creation of that painting that I kind of forget about certain things. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on live. Let me look at the comment section. Oh, I've been blocking the entire view. I'm so sorry. Like, I just really get in the zone. Right. Which that in itself is an interesting mm -hmm. uh, thought. So, uh, the whole idea of being in the zone or being in flow, as they say, um, you know, when you when you 
when you do something like painting, so I, I, the same thing happens to me when I paint or when I write, uh, mm -hmm. is I get, I get in flow or in the zone, or, or we sometimes say I get into it, right? And getting into it means you're so focused on what you're doing that you you're not paying attention to anything else right you're just everything's right. focused on painting but but even more than that you forget yourself yeah right so <laughs> because normally when we live it's we're living plus we're watching ourselves live right we have this kind of where where that's like you you were saying uh you forgot you forgot there was comments on stream on the stream because yeah i was like oh snap i'm so sorry i forgot <laughs> yeah. about you guys I was like, let me scroll. <laughs> exactly. And, and uh, when we're that focused and we forget about ourselves, now it's, it's very interesting because you, you are thinking about the, so when, I, when I'm writing, and then we'll just see how this translates to you, or when I'm painting, but I write a lot more than I paint. Uh, mm -hmm. When I'm writing, obviously I'm thinking about the words, right? Because they're coming out uh, mm -hmm. and I'm typing. And sometimes I'm, going back and changing things. So clearly there's some thought going on. Uh, but when I'm done, often what will happen is I'll start writing. It takes me a little bit to get into it, you know, a few minutes. And then at some point I'll be hungry or something and I'll think, oh, and I'll fit. And I'll go, oh my God, like an hour and a half went by. And then I'll <laughs> go back and read and I won't remember what I wrote. Like, I'm sure I must have been aware of it while I was writing, but afterwards, when I go back and read it, I'm, I, I often will just think, wow, this is really good. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, exactly but I don't remember so. having done it. Yeah, you most definitely shock yourself. I love it when I'm like, there's moments where it just hits me and I'm painting really fast and I'm just like, I can't stop. Like I'm on the roll. But like what you said, <laughs> it had been such, so much time that had passed out in my live sessions and i was like i had been on here for three hours like what i thought it was like an hour i'm like what <laughs> nobody told me that's awesome oh my gosh well it's amazing how when how fast time flows by goes by when you're in that kind of flow state and by the way that's barrett self uh exhale now is a meditation teacher he was my guest a few weeks he, he he was my guest a few weeks ago. Will be again next mm -hmm. week. Uh, he just published a book, so shout oh, out cool. to you. Uh, and I'm sure he can relate to, because the flow states. What I find fascinating is the state of creative flow that I experience mm -hmm. in painting or in meditation. Uh, I'm sorry, in painting or in writing is essentially the same as the state of flow I experience when I meditate, where I just forget what I'm doing. I forget what's happening and right. I just am. Do you meditate by the way? Painting is my meditation. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> or that. when I'm praying, if I'm in deep prayer, deep in thought, but really all of that's happening while I'm painting now. So yes. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Do you have any paintings nearby you can show us? Yes, I do. So this one, you guys have seen me um, paint with my daughters. But hold on one second. There was one painting I just finished. Oh, good. And I'm going to be posting it soon. Um, so this was a pretty huge oh. painting. Um, and I was painting this on live. I was going back and forth from kick live to TikTok live. Um, but I had a lot of fun painting this. You need to back it up just a little bit or lower. Yes, I know. It's so <laughs> it's, so small. it's so big. Maybe if I put it behind this one, you can kind of see a little bit go. more. There you go. But there it's so go. big. But um, let me show a smaller one. Let me get a smaller painting. This was my first painting ever. This was the first painting that I did when I got all of my oh, yeah. paint. And I was just like, I need to paint. This was the first one I did. It was a photo originally of my girls looking at the sunset. 
Um, and I love this photo so much that I just had to paint it. Thank you. I know. Thank I think you. so. That was literally the first painting you ever made. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty yeah. impressive first painting. <laughs> Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. It's really beautiful. Uh, when I paint, which is not so, not it's not incredibly often, but I've been painting, I painted recently because I'm creating illustrations for a poetry book uh, of a friend mm -hmm. of mine. But I, I generally, I've tried using acrylics, I think. Yeah. I, I've I I do paint with acrylics, but I'm not very good at it. Or it's not it's not my medium of choice. So usually I'll use watercolor, um, and I like to paint fast. You know, um, so I'll I'll just show you an example. This one I just happen to love, uh, and let's see. You see, it's a yeah. It's I a, love watercolor painting. It's a little, butterf it's a little butterfly. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, it probably took five minutes, you know, because I use uh, wet, wet on wet. So okay, okay. I wet the paper, the outline of the butterfly, and then I go in and and paint the color onto the wet paper. Yeah, I've seen that. I was <laughs> looking at certain videos and I was trying to like imagine what the paint the whole process is with watercolor. And I was like, I really feel like people are wetting their paper so that the paint flows a certain way. Yes. When, once they start in that, you just can find that. And you, well, you could but. do it both. You could do watercolor on dry paper, right? That gives you more control. Mm -hmm. Or you can do watercolor on wet paper. I like the wet because, you know, what happens is it just bleeds. Right. And, and you can't control the bleeding, so you have to go with it. Okay. You know, it's like, I remember when that one first bled, I didn't want it to bleed that way. I wanted the, the butterfly's body to be distinctly separate, but then it bled into the, into the wing. And I, at first I thought, oh, darn. <laughs> but then it, 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 it dried and I thought, oh, actually, that's perfect. I love that. Uh, so I, I kind of like with watercolor the fact that you can't really control it. Uh, you can you do the best you know you, you do the best you can but the the paint kind of has a mind of its own okay i guess the acrylic equivalent would be when i'm making an irrational decision while i'm painting <laughs> and I'm like, wait 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 i'm gonna keep it that way because i actually like it <laughs> <clears throat> no it, it, exactly mm -hmm. and sometimes these um the things that feel like mistakes when we do them you know, they're like creative input. You know, it's, we wouldn't have done it if we thought about it, but since yeah. it happened, we had we realized it's awesome. My favorite artist. What's your favorite artist? Who's my favorite artist? Oh, yours. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about mine, but you have to think about yours because I don't know who your favorite artist is. My favorite artist uh, is Lisa Butler. <laughs> I um, and it would be lovely if one day I could afford one of her pieces. I may just get a print, but she makes these beautiful portraits that she sews. She gets all these different colors and she sews them together. So right here could be blue, right here could be yellow, um, all all over the place. It could be all these different colors that she sews together. But because of the fact that she understands values, mm -hmm. it looks lifelike and it's incredible i love Lisa butler's work oh, i don't think i know her so i'm gonna have to yeah you have to look her up because she's all she's really blowing up now i think she's been on time magazine she's been on a lot of magazines since i first started um following her oh that's awesome and i don't really know who my favorite painter is but the one that pops to my mind is a, a french painter from couple of hundred years ago named Toulouse Lautrec. Uh, and okay. he, he was, um, he was a severely handicapped person. I think he had mm -hmm. no legs maybe. Uh, and, and so he would be on like a board with wheels in Paris, you know, a couple of hundred years ago or more. And, uh, 
and he painted a lot of posters for dance companies. He he made huh. his money. He would paint posters for for businesses, and then they would feed him. Uh, but his there's something exquisite about uh, what he would paint. It's it's often just these. If you see one, yeah, you'll recognize it. You'll go, oh yes, I've seen that style. It, he'll sometimes like he would paint a a, a woman dancing, and there's just a, just a little line that that kind of outlines the leg, and okay. it's very minimal how much he actually uh, depicts but he captures the essence of something mm -hmm. in, a, in a powerful way. So, so he's definitely one of my favorite painters. I've always been inspired by his, by his work. Yeah, uh, you'll have to send me his, um, well, he wouldn't have an Instagram. You'll have to send me his name. He will, he will <laughs> not have an Instagram. I am pretty sure he doesn't, although someone might have made an Instagram about him. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. That's, that's always possible. Um, so, I guess the other thing that I wanted to uh, touch on with you is because to me, the creative process and the process of painting, uh, and I think this is true for you, given what you just said also, it's a very spiritual process inherently uh, because to me at least, there's aspects of painting that I'm doing aspects of writing that I'm doing. I'm the one hitting the keyboard, you know. Um, but there's also something else that's coming through that's, that I can't claim credit for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just me. Something else, uh, some spirit, some essence, some something. I feel often that something when I'm writing or when I'm painting, something's working through me. And I'm wondering if you have that experience. You know, I don't really think about it. I'm so focused on the painting itself and how I'm feeling. And I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I know that there's been one piece that I painted so fast. <laughs> and I really had this huge urge to just get it out. It was like my first like original. No, it wasn't my first original piece. But it was like fully 100%, didn't see any image anywhere, and I just had to paint it. It was one painting, um, it's like all red almost, and there's a frame up on the wall. That one, I felt that, what you're saying. But for my other pieces, I don't really feel that way, but that one I had to get out. Like, I had to paint that. Right, like it, it just, it, it almost feels like it wanted to be painted. Yes, yes. Right? That was, it was very intense. So it's like it wants to be born, uh, and it just needs you to do it. <laughs> you, yeah. you have to do the work. Uh, oh, it's your favorite piece. <laughs> oh, where you don't happen to have it right next to you, do you? The red. No, one. it is now on someone's wall. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's 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 awesome. Um, I sometimes write novels, uh, and and with novels, I feel especially this kind of free flowing. And I remember once I was writing a novel, because you know, novels, you're really, because sometimes I write nonfiction and then you ha you're a little bit constrained by reality. But in, yeah. in writing fiction, you just write whatever you want. Um, so I was writing and I thought that, uh, I thought one character and another character were gonna meet. They, they were both walking mm -hmm. off of a bus and they were gonna meet and have a conversation. That's what I thought was gonna happen. And then as one character approached the other one to talk, she turned and ran. And I literally wrote, she turns and runs. But I wasn't really in, like, I don't know where that came from. And I thought, oh, no, now what do I do? Because I had a whole plan about a conversation, I thought okay. they were going to have. But then I just followed the she turns and runs. And it ended up being taking the whole story in a different direction. Uh, and I never know where, where does that come from? Like, why did that happen? Uh, what moved me to write that instead of what I was thinking? And I, I just don't know. No, but that's good because have you ever watched a show and you're like, oh, this is about to happen right now. And you're like, 
wait a second, no. Yes. <laughs> I have to keep on going because it didn't happen when I thought it was going to happen. So you just created an intense moment in that book. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. <laughs> cause, yeah, everything else was kind of leading up to something else. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I also have an online magazine, and I published a, an interview with another friend of mine who's a painter. Uh, mm -hmm. She's probably my favorite living painter. Uh, and that may be because I know her and love her, but um, mm -hmm. her name, uh, Nicole, her name is Nicole. And she's, I don't know, about 87, maybe, maybe around there. Um, and she lived in New York in the 1950s and was part of the circle of artists, which, which included um, uh, uh, Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock was probably the most famous. I don't know if you know Jackson Pollock, but he did the paintings with like the drops of paint, you know, the, where he splashed paint on canvases, the very modern art looking paints. Okay. I'm pretty new to the art world. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so yeah. things that yeah. other people know, I just don't know. This is great. <laughs> I get to, uh, my favorite role is getting to tell you something. <laughs> yeah. So Jackson Pollock would take, like, he would use house paint often okay. and paint, paint with house brushes. And he would paint on canvases that were about oh, 20, 20, sque 20 feet around, 20 feet square. You know? Wow. And he would put them on the floor in his studio and he would splash paint on them, you know, and and he would walk around and he would use different colors. Now, his paintings are worth millions now. Um, was he like the first person to ever really he, do that? He was, he was the first person to do that, yes. Wow. So that kind of splashing color. And of course he was sort of ridiculed at the time, but uh, he did it anyway. <clears throat> and, um, and so she was part of those circles and, and they were all, what they were exploring was spontaneity in art. So the idea was, and supposedly when he would do a painting, he would sit in front of the blank canvas, sometimes, you know, for hours or days until he felt inspired, until something moved him to paint. And then he would just try and go with, without thinking about what he was doing, just go with what was coming. Uh, and, and so the idea was that the canvas became a, a record of what spontaneously wanted to come through him okay. while he was painting. Uh, and it seemed like a lot of them at that time were doing that. Uh, William de Kooning was another a famous painter uh, that was a friend of, of this friend of mine. And he would practice in the same way and she would practice in the same way she would just sit and wait to be moved and she would describe to me that it didn't always work <laughs> she said, but she said sometimes you would literally feel like you are being moved by the painting just like you described right sometimes a, a, a painting that wanted to be painted would just grab you and it would it would come through you in a way that didn't feel like you doing it Scrying? Yeah, I don't know what scrying is. I thought you were going to know that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but I, sometimes I want to, like, slap myself on the hand because I have, like, multiple series of paintings that are just in my head. And I literally will imagine the completed piece or a blurry version of the completed piece. And I just don't paint it. Like, the one red one, I just had that urge and I, I just did it. Mm. With the other ones, I had the urge, and it's just been sitting idle in my head, and I, I just need to just do them. Like, I got, like, a huge, massive canvas that I wanted to do a painting with both of my hands um, at the same time, plus I'm both-handed, or, yeah. <laughs> but I just didn't do it. So, so. What, what prevents you from doing it? <laughs> Me wanting to just work on my commissioned uh, pieces. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fair enough. I mean, <laughs> I, I can, I, I get that. Um, but I do think it would be interesting for you to 
give yourself some space and time yeah. to explore more of these creative works that are knocking at your door, you know? I think I can do that if I remove the deposit option on my website. <laughs> it makes it very easy to purchase a commissioned uh, piece, but um, <laughs> I think I'm going to remove it. It'll give me time to paint. Uh, paint for fun, you mean? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or just for creativity. Yeah, that makes sense. But since you mentioned it, I do want to mention before we finish that uh, people can go to your website, and I believe it's thecrystal.com, uh, mm -hmm. with not an A, but a V. So C-R-Y-S-T-V-L, the, thecrystal.com. You can see some of Crystal's paintings. Uh, I think the one behind you is uh, up on your website, uh, at least parts of it. The, um, the, one, the one of your daughters, for sure, is up there. Yes, that one is. Uh, and uh, she does commissioned work. Uh, she paints portraits, all various sizes, from relatively small to relatively huge. <laughs> uh, and so you should definitely check out her website and uh, look at her work. And if you uh, are moved to want a portrait, Better put a deposit in quick before she takes that down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm very intrigued by the fact that you're saying, you know, it's oftentimes people talk about these things as downloads, that you're getting downloads of paintings that want to come through. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine is a professor at Rice University, and he talks about the same thing for writers, and I can relate to this, uh, that there are stories that want to be told. Yeah. And, and, and they are looking for a writer who's willing to tell them. Mm -hmm. And I imagine the same is true with paintings. There are paintings that want to be mm -hmm. painted, and they're looking for a painter who's willing to paint them. And I think, you know, you've, you're, you know you're, like you said, you're relatively new to painting. Thank you guys for joining. And yet i i think you're going to get more and more visits from paintings because the painters are going to see that you're good mm -hmm. uh, and and that you love it and they're going to say, oh i'm going to see if she'll paint me <laughs> and then they'll come knocking so it would be amazing to let yourself go to the extent that you can to see what comes through well, a portrait of you i can imagine a detailed image of you but the background being very fluid like what how you mentioned the watercolor that would be a really beautiful painting that would be beautiful mm -hmm. and portraits are a beautiful thing to paint i i, I love the portraits i've seen that you've done because i can i can see that you've captured the person that's good you know? <laughs> and that's what's nice about portraits as a that's what's different about portraits than photographs mm -hmm. is there's some extra element involved there that allows you to capture people in a different way, I think. Right. It's beautiful. So we've come to the end of our time, Crystal. It's fantastic to talk to you and yes, everybody who's you. here. I'm so happy. For those of you who knew Crystal already, I'm happy to meet you like Will. Thank you for being here today. And uh, Will gets my, I don't know. I'm so, so happy that Will's your inspiration. Uh, <laughs> it's so important for artists to have people that believe in them. Because uh, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's hard to keep going on your own. Uh, and those of you who never met Crystal before, I'm glad I had a chance to introduce you. Please do visit her site. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Will. I don't know who's awesome, me or you, but you're awesome too, Will. Uh, <laughs> all three of us are awesome. We're all awesome. All of us are awesome. And thank you all for being here today. It's always uh, absolutely a joy to, uh, to speak with you and to, to be here today. So thanks for joining. Thank you, Crystal, so much. And you have a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you at your stream and watching you paint some more. All right. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, Will. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Thank bye. you. Yes, please. Feel free to say anything you like as you depart. <laughs> See you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.
Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. I will talk to you all again next week and some of you sooner than that. And I really appreciate your being on. So thank you so much. Bye now. Bye, Will. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I will follow you. Good. I just followed you here, Will. So I look forward to being friends. And Daniel, thank you so much for being here, my friend. I think you got on and I didn't even notice. Uh, but Daniel, by the way, who's ever still here, is going to be my guest in a few weeks. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye, Daniel. Bye, everyone. See you soon.